Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing very well and welcome back to another cryptocurrency technical analysis where in today's video I'm going to be going through the Bitcoin chart in front of you right here and how we can get a perspective and a bias of how we can trade Bitcoin using the statistics and data that is clearly presented to us on the chart. Okay, so today's video is going to aim to, you know, present to you the facts that we have on this chart and how we can use those facts to actually then trade. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this one, it should be educational as well as beneficial to understand how I'm looking at this. So we all know what's going on with the channels, but let's zoom out to the monthly. Let's zoom out to the monthly being the 1st of June today. Okay, so 1st of June. Hope that you all have a brilliant month ahead. But what can we take here from the Bitcoin chart? So really, really clearly, we, we all know what happened in, in uh, March where we had that, that, that massively massive candle to the downside. Okay, but after that big candle to the downside with V-shaped recovery. Okay, we've had a V-shape, so it looks like a V, doesn't it? especially when you come down to something like the daily, okay? So you had that really big drop, but then the V-shaped recovery, okay? So you you retrace all of that move, and this is very stock market-like. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, what we can see is that, 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 March, that March decline, okay? We opened April, and we got a bullish engulfing candle. That is, that is very bullish indeed. So you get a bullish engulfing candle, okay, where you actually closed above the, the open of, of March. So that's a bullish engulfing from the, from the opens to the closes. And then you top out uh, the high of the candle around 9,400, okay? And then what's very nice indeed from a bullish perspective is that you've got continuation in May. So May has led to continuation here where we where we got another green candle. You didn't close above April's high. So the April high being uh, 9,481. We actually closed this about $40 below. We obviously poked up higher. With a higher, with with an upper wick, closed back below April's high. So what's this telling us? Well, April's high is clearly is is clearly a resistance at the moment, which is around nine four hundred. But um, that's kind of what what you're hovering around support resistance level at the moment, isn't it? But uh, nevertheless, we're into June now, and June is also continuing the bullish trend here with possibly going for a third green month in a row. But what we got to um, acknowledge here is we're one month into June. Okay, so we're one, we're one, <laughs> we're one day into June. Oh, uh, we are one day into June and we've got 29 days left. So we cannot really form any biases off of what June is likely to do. To do this, we have to zoom into a lower term time frame. But simply stating facts, we have a bullish engulfing candle in April, continuation in May. That's leaving us onto the June perspective. Okay. And to get a perspective of June, we have to zoom down because we are one day into it. We're one day into it. And um, really, the, the channels, you know, I've, I've, I've stressed these channels so, 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 so much. But you can clearly see how their resistances and supports. And we can see once again over the past month that, that the bottom of our channel has been clear support, support, support. And the highs have, you know, the higher channel is clearly resistance, 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 isn't it? So we're very well defined here with our upper channels. And I'm going to zoom in again because it's just easier to show you on a lower term time frame. It's just clear as day, isn't it? It's just clear as day. We've got s clear support down here at the channel lows. We've got clear, uh, you know, you know, supply up here at the channel highs. So one, one could say that the supply at the channel highs where people are, you know, people are okay with selling and then there's demand at the channel lows where people are okay with buying. And then obviously within this, we have a few key levels of our weekly and our monthly, Okay. And we can clearly see at the monthly, it is a big level which has acted as resistance, consolidation, support during an extended period of time before flipping into resistance and now possibly uh, back into a support. And obviously this is officially around here at around 9,339. Sorry, I adjusted this yesterday. But it's around, our monthly is officially around 9,339 and 50 cent, if I remember correctly. So th this is what we're kind of looking at here. We've, we've got a clear, clearly defined uh, demand zone. We've got a clearly defined supply zone. And then we've got the middle region, which is around the middle of this monthly, um, you know, which is which is kind of the equilibrium of this where it's somewhat a fair value. OK, so people up here are saying, you know, it's overpriced. People down here are saying it, it's a discount. And then the middle of this chart is, is where there's a fair value. And, and you can see it's fair because, you know, you, you're getting rejected you're getting some consolidation, you're getting support, and you're getting resistance. So there's a big battle going on, okay? There's a big battle going on at the moment between bulls and between bears. And what I want to massively emphasize to you is please don't get wrapped up in any sort of bias where you're thinking to yourself, Bitcoin has to go down from here or Bitcoin has to go up from here. You're going to see the stories printed, especially with what's going on in the greater picture of the world right now. There's there's so many things that can try and influence you, OK, in terms of narratives, in, in terms of narratives that people will push to you and in terms of just stories that may try and, you know, force you into an opinion of, you know, this is 
you know, for X, Y and Z reasons of what's happening in the world, this is really bullish for Bitcoin or this is really bearish for the stock market and all of these sort of things that are going to be pushed to you. And all I will say to you is ignore it. In, in my humble opinion, block out every single bit of news that you see, because guess what? It's, it's, it's not needed. Everything that's in the greater picture in the news, we can tell from the chart. OK, when we when we drop down in March, 50 percent, you know, the chart was the chart was already bearish. The chart was already bearish when we had that 50 percent drop. You, you know, that I was short and I managed to I was in shorts from all of that 50 percent drop. So, you know, I wasn't in a short because I knew there was going to be a coronavirus job or anything like that. I was I was short because the chart was bearish. And likewise, now every so what I, what I wanted to highlight by that is, you know, the, Yes, the, the news may force, you know, may, may speed up things because I'm not going to deny that, that that obviously helped my short position. But nevertheless, nevertheless, everything that we need to know is in the charts. OK, so whether this is bullish or bearish from a news perspective or what, you know, the fundamentals, you know, they, they are, are irrelevant to us as traders. The only thing we care about is the charts. OK, so that's a little bit of advice that I would I would give and I've, I've always always said it. I, I don't care less about the fundamentals I'm not interested in what the miners are doing I'm not interested in any sort of fundamentals if I'm totally honest the only thing I trade is the charts and the technicals and I believe that this is how the market moves so um, where can we get a bullish perspective? Well, what we can say is if, if this is supply up at the highs, if you actually get into the supply without getting another rejection, that's, that's showing us a sign of strength here, isn't it? If, 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 if we came, if we come back into this higher channel and there is no rejection, well, that's showing us that supplies may be fading out, especially if you move up on high volume. So if you move up to high volume at the highs and you're seeing people actually, instead of high supply coming in, e.g. high selling, and you see a reversal that and you come up to the high once more and you see high buying well that's now telling you that, that things are changing aren't they where were where there was once high supply maybe that supply has run out okay you have to remember there's only a certain amount of times people can sell this level before you you go through it because there's no more sellers left and in the past there's been a lot of sellers at these levels but there's only so much times they can sell remember that so if if we push up to this level once more and we're seeing signs of um you know increased demand at these levels where people are more interested in buying and selling well naturally we could say that's bullish and yeah without a doubt we can we can push past this 9000 level okay 9800 which is clearly the resistance at the moment you know then you can be looking back up and you know then you're looking up to around 10200 11000 12000 you know level to level this is another thing that I will always stress. You don't just you don't just think, oh, if we break 10k, we're going to 20k. You know, you, you've obviously got sub levels throughout the you, throughout it. So you'd be going from resistance to resistance to resistance levels. Okay, just as if if you're going to support, there's no point in thinking, or oh, if 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 we break down from 9,000, we're, we're going to 1,000. You know, that's not the way that you trade. You'd say, okay, if we break 9,000, we'll look for 8,500. We'll look for 8,000, and it's support to support to support. This is the way that you trade consistently and make money. So I refer you back to one of the trades that I was obviously in last week, uh, which was a, an original short from the high. But then guess what? We take profits as price comes down because there's, th this is the, the, the way that you don't trade. Let's say, for example, you're short from the highs up here. So you're in a short from the high up here. Price obviously decreased. And this is a take profit zone. So for me, it was 9,425 and price decreased to 9,425. But if you do not take profits here, well, now you're left in a situation that if price does go back up, you could have been, you know, this wasn't a really good short. And I'm, and I'm not going to say it wasn't like this was an amazing short up at the highs. But if you see the decrease in price, you don't take profits because you get greedy and then price comes back up and stops you out and you take a loss. You obviously take a loss. You, you take a, a losing trade. Whereas if you take profit, at key support levels if you then come up and get stopped out for example um, then it's not the end of the world because you'd have taken profits and this is what I'm referring to last night by the way um, you obviously come down to 9425 which was a key support level and you know could have price went down lower? Absolutely, it could have. And it did in the end. It went down to around 9,380. So, you know, I could have got a bit more profit in that. But that's not the, that's not what we're after in this. It's not about squeezing the most amount of profits as possible. It's about getting in at a fair value of what you believe is a, is a fair is a fair value of a short or a long position. And then it's taking profits sensibly. OK, so it's, it's being really sensible on these charts. Uh, another thing that I'd say is when we're range bound and it's, it's undeniable. 
you know, I was one of the first people to recognize this range. Let's be honest, I was one of the first to recognize this range. Um, whereas many were expecting continuation of the highs to be broken out here. Many were expecting continuation of the lows to be breaking out here. You know, I've been always saying short the highs, long the lows. Don't long the highs, don't short the lows. You know, it's really, really, really simple. We are trading a range here. There's no need to get overly bullish at the highs. There's no need to be overly bullish at the, at the lows. In fact, it should be opposite. It should be bearish at the highs and bullish at the lows. And how can you say to yourself, okay, I'm saying to myself, black and white, bearish at the highs, bullish at the lows. But obviously, if you understand how to read charts, you can you can form a perspective that is, okay, this time when we approach the high, I can look to see if there's bullish signs, e.g. very simply, I'm just going to say supply and demand, e.g. looking at volume, looking at delta. You know, you can take this information and then actually form a perspective that is not from a bias, but looking at cold, hard facts. Okay, so we're li literally come across something like this and just look at cold hard facts of, of what is the chart telling us is there heavy supply at the highs or is there heavy demand at the lows if there is then you, you naturally expect the range to continue so this is what I want to stress in this video I know this may, may have been a little bit complex for a little, few people I'm not sure but what I'm really saying here is is please don't go overly bearish or overly bullish trade the chart for what you have trade the chart and I know that's more easier said than done and um, and especially if you're an intermediate slash newer trader, you have emotions flying all over the place. So you have your emotions flying here and there. And, you know, it's hard to control the emotions. But really, really simply, if you've recognized a range, trade the range until it breaks. OK, so it's pretty dangerous to get bullish at the highs and it's pretty dangerous to get bearish at the lows unless you see signs that there's need. You know, there's a need to do that. For example, when we were back here when we had our smaller channel going on, okay, and we start consolidating under resistance. Well, I was bullish back at this consolidation under resistance, expecting the push to the upside, okay? And you can go back and watch some of my videos on this. Like, you know, th so there's times when you can see consolidation under resistance and, and then instead of being bearish at the channel high, actually be bullish at the channel high because there's a sign that, that the, the supply is weakening and the de demand is increasing. You're more likely to break up, aren't you? And the same, same goes for here, that if we start to consolidate under resistance and we actually see supply decreasing and demand increasing, well, then we can naturally say to ourselves, there's no point in trying to short this. We can't expect the break outwards, okay? But until you see signs of that happening, it's it's dangerous to try and, and, and to try and long into these highs. So, um, you know, that's my perspective on this. And um, that's kind of my tips and technical analysis for you here. We have clear, clear defined resistance. We have clearly defined support. The middle of this range is around the monthly, which is arguably fair value. So it's not the best idea to take positions on the middle of the range. Um, but you know, that, that's something for you to decide. This video hasn't been any financial advice. I'm just giving you my perspective for educational and entertainment purposes uh, to kind of explain and help uh, hopefully assist some people. Uh, final words I'll say is, is block all your news because you're going to see it time and time again over this coming week. There's, there's a lot of narratives that can be pushed here. So try and ignore all the narratives, trade the chart. You know, if, if you start breaking above this channel, do not do not think to yourself, um, oh, pr you know, there's a bearish Elliott wave count. This needs to go to 1,800 or, or you know, um, any any kind of things like this that might influence you. Simply, if we break from the highs, why, why are you looking bearish, you know? Obviously, yes, we can have an upthrust at the distribution. And again, this is where we'd be looking at statistics of, is that likely? You know, is that likely that that happens? Is a swing failure pattern likely? Well, instead of saying, is it likely, you can actually trade it as it's happening when you know how to read the volume. So it's it's kind of like, you know, this is the process that we're going through. We're not trading from biases. We're trading from hard stated facts. And, uh, you know, to wrap it up here and give you something that's that's helpful, I'd say arguably where you are right now, 9540 is, is not really a great is not really a great position because let's say if, if you're going short, your stop loss is likely to, you know, to these lows and your target is back at around 9800. Well, then look, you're looking at maybe one dollar gain for one dollar loss. You want to be in a position where you're, you know, you're longing down at the lows where, you, where you're looking at like a 50 cent loss for a three dollar gain, if that makes sense. So you'd, I, w I would say you're either waiting for another push up here or for a push down. It's, it's arguably not a great time to take a position and, and this is the thing in trading patience is massively key you do have to wait for these high probability setups and where you are right now you've not got a high probability setup have you so you have to wait i would say for the for the increase or the decrease to get into a position if you're not in one uh but that's that's my personal opinion <laughs> i I'm, I'm i'm i that's what i would be saying right now like i'm not in a day trade 
uh, position from this morning because I've, I've not seen like t since I woke up which was like a what about an hour or two ago I've, I've not seen a good trade to take so I'll, I'll patiently wait for a good trade to take today and that that would be from a decrease in price where I'd, I'd naturally maybe look for a long or if we, we lose the monthly on high volume then I'd be looking for shorts or if we come up to the high and claim some resistances well I'll look for a, a long today uh, or if we obviously look for for the supply coming in then I'll look for a, you know a short today so I'm I'm not only looking for longs I'm not only for looking for shorts I'll trade the chart how it is these are the key levels as pointed out to you the channel high the channel low your monthly very key levels and i hope that this video has assisted you today you know i've not i've not told you how to trade this i've just given you information some data some very key levels and this is now for you to form a perspective um you know that's how you're going to increase and and you know be a good trader really so um i hope this video has been insightful for you and i've taught you through why we trade the ranges how we, well, I've not really taught you how you identify the range, but nevertheless, I've told you where the ranges are and how we can then use this to to enter trades, okay? So clearly, you can see now how, how these levels are, are very well, very, very, very well respected. Um, So I'll end with this. If you're interested in, <laughs> these are some of the trades that we literally took from that rise in price. So when we got the bounce off of the monthly to that increase, if you're interested in me in me laying out Pacific plans where I give more Pacific plans of actual levels where I'm looking to enter trades and when I enter my trades, then um, you know chartchampions.com I do lay this out in a lot more simplistic terms of where I'm, I'm looking to trade uh, as well as you know the, the focus is obviously education so I'm not a signals group but nevertheless I'll give you the education of how to uh, you know how to actually mark out these levels, how to actually recognize supply and demand and how to actually trade off of the hard numbers. So if you're interested in that educational side of things, then, um, you know, chartchampions.com, uh, you know, we, we're, a, we're a team, so I'll be more than happy with my team to, to teach you how to do this. And, uh, you know, these are some of the, these were the, some of the posts in literally an hour as we moved up here, as you can see, many, many, many happy people. So <laughs> that was brilliant to see. And, uh, you know, I'll just, just end with that. If, if you're interested, that's a service that we offer. Uh, obviously, no obligation to take that service if you don't want to. So uh, thank you once again, everybody. Hope that you've enjoyed these insights. Have a brilliant week ahead. Have a brilliant month ahead. Uh, you know, stay positive, stay happy and trade the charts, trade the technical analysis. Have a good day and goodbye. Cheers.